The word sovereignty is defined as the authority of a nation to govern itself. It's a word that implies power and the ability to make meaningful changes in your world and in the lives of those you care about. Indian tribes are sovereign nations. We have the right to govern our land. The roadways that cross our land carry people into our nation. These in-between spaces can become a stage for contention, but they also represent a chance for cooperation. Federal litigation has, at times, stood in defiance of our sovereignty. In many ways, it still does. But today, I don't want to talk about what we can't do. I want to talk about a very real, very present opportunity for tribal judges to impact the health and safety of our communities. You may not yet realize what's possible or the extent of your power to create change. This is what I hope to show you. My name is Jan Morris, and I'm the director of the National Tribal Judicial Center at the National Judicial College. I'm the Nevada Department of Public Safety, Office of Traffic Safety designated Nevada Tribal Judicial Outreach Director, a distinguished faculty at the NJC, and a retired tribal court judge with over 25 years of judicial service. I recently wrote a paper demonstrating that tribal regulation of CMVs on tribal land is a vital and appropriate exercise of tribal sovereignty. I wanted to show that tribal judges can claim our sovereignty through some very specific laws and regulations concerning traffic violations on the 164,000 miles of road that traverse tribal land. As we exercise tribal sovereignty in this way, we will promote public safety, build or enhance collaborative working relationships between tribes and states, and encourage formal federal recognition of tribal authority so that unsafe CMV operators can be reported to all licensing jurisdictions. As Chief of Police on the Reservation, I regulate and enforce traffic violations of all kinds involving all types of vehicles. It's important that we have the full power of the legal system behind us. The Supreme Court does not question the authority of tribal police to patrol roads within the reservation. That includes right-of-ways, which are part of state highways. There are 164,000 miles of roadways traversing tribal lands, and many crashes occur on these roads. State law enforcement is not always readily available to arrive at the scene of a crash. Tribal enforcement of traffic laws, whether originating in state or on tribal lands, can prevent fatalities associated with these crashes. This is particularly important when CMV, CDL vehicles are involved. When tribes and states work cooperatively and collaboratively, we can ensure that CMVs operating on highways within Indian country meet all federal safety regulations. This will help reverse the upward trend of CMV involved crashes, which cause property damages, injuries, and unnecessary deaths. Indian tribes have inherent sovereign authority over tribal lands. This includes roadways that pass through areas where our families live. Unsafe CMVs or operators pose a potential threat. The health and safety of our communities, manifested through civil traffic regulation, is a matter of strong interest for all of us. In light of this, states should recognize a tribe's authority and ideally enter into cooperative agreements with us to enforce and adjudicate state and tribal laws based on federal CMV regulations. For the sake of our communities and our nation, the roads that traverse Indian country must be kept safe. There have been several federal and U.S. Supreme Court decisions as to whether or not tribes have civil authority over non-Indians within tribal lands. But there has been no decision made specifically about the issue of traffic regulation of non-Indians and particularly regulation of CMVs. Our communities have long experienced mistrust towards state courts with good reason but the law is the law, and we must be aware of the power we hold to fully prosecute cases where laws have been broken on tribal lands. 
Tribal judges can and should pursue collaboration with in-state judges on traffic cases. Not only is this possible, it's backed up by the U.S. Constitution and the Supreme Court. Sovereign Indian tribes have the right to enact public safety laws in accordance with tribal constitutional authority. This jurisdiction is approved by the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Interior. In short, when traffic laws are broken on our land, we have the undeniable authority to legislate, adjudicate, and enforce. The Confederated Tribes of the Colville Reservation versus Washington, 938 F. 2nd, 146, 9th Circuit, 1991, states that civil regulatory traffic laws promote the public safety and welfare on public highways and that traffic infractions not otherwise denominated as crimes, such as DWI, are not criminal offenses. Traffic regulation within tribal lands is not exclusive to states where tribes have shown their own highway safety laws and institutions are adequate. Furthermore, Ortiz Barraza v. United States, 512 F. 2nd, 1176, 9th Circuit, 1975, states that the power to regulate is only meaningful when combined with the power to enforce. Obviously, tribal police must have such power. The state and federal court system has accepted and deemed obvious the fact that tribes have the authority to regulate traffic laws and the power to enforce them. It is a natural next step to create specific legislation that gives tribal courts the power to regulate non-Indian drivers, and particularly CMV drivers, crossing Indian country. We need to accept and honor the fact that this is our land, and we can fully extend legal authority here. I'm not asking you to trust the feds. I'm asking you to trust me. There are three things I want you to remember. Tribal courts have sovereignty over Indian country. This is our inherent right. In 2021, in the case of U.S. versus Cooley, the Supreme Court reiterated and confirmed that its prior decisions do not question the authority of tribal police to patrol roads within a reservation, including rights of way made part of a state highway. Furthermore, it was found that Congress had never sought to deny tribal authority in this matter. In fact, the court found that existing legislation and executive action appeared to operate on the assumption that tribes have retained this authority. Our authority to govern is assumed to be still intact, not something for which we are still fighting. Tribal courts have the right to seek collaboration from in-state judges. Washington v. Confederated Tribes of the Colville Indian Reservation 447 U.S. 134, 1980 states, the federal government has long recognized that Indian tribes possess a broad measure of civil regulatory jurisdiction over the activities of non-Indians on Indian reservation lands in which the tribes have a significant interest. We have jurisdiction over non-Indians on reservation lands. We have the right to seek help from in-state authorities on these cases. Tribal courts have the authority to hear and decide civil traffic cases, even those involving non-Indian drivers. When laws are violated on our land, we have an inherent right to enforce them. In the case of Iowa Mutual Insurance Company v. La Plante, the court found that tribal authority over the activities of non-Indians on reservation lands is an important part of tribal sovereignty and civil jurisdiction over such activities presumptively lies in the tribal courts unless affirmatively limited by a specific treaty provision or federal statute. If non-Indians violate civil traffic laws on our land, tribal courts have full authority to adjudicate. Federal case law backs us up and state officials are therefore expected and required to cooperate and collaborate with us in those cases.
Motivation always starts with a vision of what's possible. When we see the vision clearly, we want to see it happen. When we know it's possible, that knowledge moves us forward. The word sovereignty is also used to describe the power of a leader. As tribal judges, we are leaders. We care deeply for our communities. And this is how we can express our leadership, by taking action in new ways to solve problems that increase quality of life for everyone under our care. I encourage you to take hold of your ability to influence the future. Help us enforce and adjudicate laws to ensure the safety of our roads for the sake of our families and communities.